Good afternoon, fellows and gals. So once again, here I am uh, with another video. Um, I just gave a 15 minute speech. I felt like Trump talking uh, to you guys with a lot of emphasis, but uh, unfortunately my alarm clock uh, stopped my um, recording, so I had to start all over again. So let's, let's start off from scratch, talking about what's going on in the world today. Um, the last two loads that I have had uh, were late, and not because of me. They were low, late getting ready. Uh, both loads were supposed to be a drop and hook, which means you drop the empty trailer, pick up the loaded trailer, and move on down the road. Well, the first one I went to was over the weekend, and let's see, I'm trying to think, it was last Friday, and uh, I picked up the load. Well, I was meant to pick up the load at a certain time, wasn't ready. Well, guess what? Eight, nine hours later, it was ready. So I ended up getting a restart out of that, which was good. But but still, the load wasn't ready. Put me behind for the next load. So I went to the next load, picked it up. Again, not ready. Six hours later, seven hours later, guess what? Out of hours. And that's what happens. Um, Schneider doesn't allow you to split your logs. So when you can't split your logs, you're stuck with what hours you have. So you got a 14-hour clock. Guess what? If it runs your 14 hour clock, runs into your 11 hour clock, you're done. So that's what happened. This was uh, Saturday. That's exactly what happened. Ran out of time. Um, actually, it was Sunday, excuse me. Ran out of time yesterday once I got the load. Uh, they end up making the, the drop and hook load. Both of them end up being live loads. Uh, so what happened was, as I got the load, I had to go 30 miles down the road and stopped at a truck stop for the night and did my 10 hour and got up at 5 o'clock this morning and started making the drive. So with that being said, um, I had to cancel the next five loads because of me being so far behind. There was no way I was going to catch up with uh, what load I had. So what I did is I uh, just decided I'm going to take a 34-hour reset once this load gets delivered in the morning, which I'm stopped again because it's almost 850 miles. I can't drive that in one day. So I'm going to split it up, and um, that's what I'm doing. Taking a 34 after this load and I've already got some new loads booked up. I think I'm going to have a pretty decent week. And last week was horrible. Week before that was okay. Um, last week I didn't get a paycheck because I went negative because of the load that didn't get delivered last week got put onto this week. It's all a ripple effect. And if you don't get a load on one week, it gets next over to the next week. Well, the load that I had last week was a $2,700 load that got plopped over to this week, which again, like I said, I had to cancel a load and then two loads being late. It all makes a ripple effect. Um, this week's gonna be a little bit better. I, I don't think I'm gonna be, a matter of fact, I know I'm not gonna be negative this week, but things will turn around. Um, so here's my rant. The problem that I have is the people in the warehouse. It's not the companies. Company Schneider is awesome. Uh, I've got no problems with Schneider, not yet anyways. Um, They've been good to me. Um, just a few minor things, nothing nothing major. Um, but the problem is, is the, the people in the warehouses, they don't wanna work. Uh, the loads aren't ready. Uh, they don't care. Um, it, 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 it sucks, it, it really does. I have conversations with friends that I, that I talk to on a daily basis about this and, and they're experiencing the same things. It's, it's not just me, it's every company you go to where unfortunately there's so much wait time that when it comes down to it, your drive time is wasted because of the time you're waiting on the loads and not being able to do any kind of split sleeper berth or doing a break in the middle, it, it doesn't help. Um, it's not the answer. That's the, the only thing negative that I've seen with Schneider. So, oh, that's one thing. Second thing that I've seen negative with Schneider um, is I've seen appointment times change for some reason. And I don't know why that is. Uh, I'm usually pretty good about knowing where I need to be and how I need to be and and, and all that. So I'm usually never late and I haven't been late, but I've noticed that some of my loads, the times have changed, which uh, could possibly have made me late if I wouldn't have been paying attention. Um, but again, that's one thing. Um, and me and me and my friend were talking earlier today, the company he works for, he's pretty much doing the same thing I am. He's got a truck from uh, Schneider Finance and but he's taking it to a different carrier than I have and I'm not going to mention the carrier doesn't doesn't matter it's, it's not pertinent but um, if you know you know um, but 
you know, it's it's the same thing. He's dealing with the same issues that I am. We're also noticing that it seems like the loads that we're getting, the amounts are, are decreasing, um, just like with the spot market. Spot market guys are having the same issues. Uh, the prices are going down. People are taking the, the loads for lesser money. Um, and it's, it's just, you know, it's getting bad for all of us out here. Um, and, you know, the companies are taking money away and they're, you know, taking these loads away. Like one he was talking about, um, pay $200 more last week than what it did this week, which really doesn't make any sense other than the company taking the money because it's contract freight. The price should be the same each single week until they rebid that contract, whether it's a six month, a year or five year or whatever the, whatever the contract is, the price shouldn't change. That's why they have contracts. Usually they're year contracts, but the price shouldn't change. Um, but these are the things that us as truck drivers have to deal with. Not only do we deal with that, where nobody wants to work, we also have to deal with the truck stops, the people at the truck stops. They don't want to work. They don't want to be there because they're only making, you know, 10 or $15 an hour. Their bills need to be paid. Um, not only do they not want to work, the people in the restaurants in the truck stops don't want to work. And with in turn, you know, you got the high prices where they just gouge the truck drivers because they know we really don't have anywhere else we can go to to park the big rigs. Uh, and that's besides the point too, because there are some states where you can't even, you know, go into because they don't allow parking. You know, a couple of them states, California, um, there's very few places in California. New York is a big one. New Jersey is a big one. Um, you know, some of those northeastern states and some of the, the northwestern states and, and western states, they just, they don't even want you there. That's why they're passing these walls to keep trucks out. I got news for you guys. If you, if you run into that, I know a lot of you guys live in those states, but if you run into that stuff, quit delivering to the states. They don't need their product anyways if they don't want us out there. You know, the, the rigs have to go somewhere. I get it. They're our, they're eyesores. I, you know, I don't want the... I don't want the rig any more than you do, but it's 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 a way to make money, and it's it's a um, a transportation unit to get products to where they need to be. If it wasn't for truckers, you know, the, nobody would have anything. Ninety-seven percent of all commerce is delivered by trucks, not trains, by trucks. Um, the trains are very important in the commerce part of it, um, but the thing is, with trains, they're they're limited. They can't. You know they can't steer and, and go back and forth they can only go where the rails take them so eventually it has to go to a truck and you know i'm just speaking common sense to everybody here everybody knows that but it's, it's very frustrating when you try to do a job you try to do it the best that you can and um you know nobody wants you to be out here nobody wants you to drive on their streets um, people pull out in front of you get crazy they they break chest you um you know, the biggest pet peeve that I have, and it's not like I drive fast. 65 is as fast as I drive. I usually drive 60. But what irritates the crap out of me more than anything, two things. Number one, somebody just has to get in front of the big rig. Whether you're going uphill, downhill, they got to get in front of the big rig. And guess what? You're driving 60. Well, guess what? They're driving 57. So automatically, the radar in the truck motions, understands that that car's driving 57. It's going to slow you down to 57. So that's one issue. The other issue is, is people merging onto the freeway. It's an acceleration lane. It's There's two options. Actually, there's three options. The third option you don't want. But the two options you have, speed up, slow down, or run into the truck. Well, guess what? I've actually had somebody do that third option before, and it wasn't funny. She, she could have been killed, honestly. Um, wasn't my fault. Uh, a lot of people don't understand how that merging lane works, but when a truck's driving at 60, 65 miles an hour or whatever, it takes so much power and energy to get that truck up to that speed. You don't step on the brake and you don't step on the accelerator. You just have that thing on cruise and people just don't understand that. So what you got to do, speed up or slow down. It's real easy. It's not a hard concept. Um, those are my two biggest pet peeves with, with drivers of cars that just don't have a clue. And every day it's getting worse and worse and worse. And it's it's not really the people that, that are our age. It's more of the younger crowd that I'm seeing. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some older people that have issues too. But it's the younger crowd, you know, 30 and under. Um, it's it's this new generation of people. And I, and I know all of us, you know, I even heard it when I was growing up. This generation, this generation. But... Honestly, I mean, if you really think about it and you look, 
it is this generation. They they don't want to work. They don't want to do anything. They don't want to pay attention. Um, they're addicted to TikTok and you know all the other different apps that are going on right now. Um, yesterday when I picked this load up, um, <laughs> they were busy playing on their phones, Facebook, TikTok, whatever they were doing. They're just busy on their phone. Didn't give a shit that I was even there. They don't care that I'm on a clock. Uh, that I have 14 hours in the day to make a decision on you know where I'm going, what I'm doing. They just don't care. Nobody cares. Um, and it's sad. It really is. Because most of the drivers that are out here, and, and granted, there are some of those new age generation drivers that are out here too that are the same way. They don't care either. Um, they'll, they'll do anything they can to get in your way or do whatever. But for the most part, most of the drivers that are out here we're all out here doing the same thing, trying to make a buck, trying to make a living, uh, support our families at home while we're out here, you know, suffering, uh, doing what we do. It's not fun. I mean, I, I, I love this job. Absolutely love it. But in the last year or so, it's it's really become kind of become a burden. Um, and honestly, if there was a job that, that, that I could make the money that I'm making doing this and staying at home, I probably say hey you know what i'm gonna do it but there's not and it's so easy the job really is easy overall and i do like it i'm not complaining i'm not bitching i guess i really need to get off my rant but this is basically the video today i wanted to kind of go over the different companies um again you know I i'll give you kind of a brief synopsis i've said this before in the past swift was a great company i've got no beef with swift I know a lot of drivers that are still there. A lot of those guys are actually leaving the company because their freight market has slowed down. And guess what? It's everywhere. Freight market slowed down everywhere, but Swiss really having some issues right now. They just released their load board. Uh, first day out, I think they had six loads on the whole load board for the whole country. Um, I, again, I, I don't know. I'm not there anymore. I don't want to speak on their behalf. All I can say is I had fun at Swift while I was there. I made a lot of money with Swift. Um, no, no complaints with Swift. Same thing with Christensen. When I was with Christensen, my only issue with, with Christensen, it was two. I couldn't make over $1,800 a week, which, you know, honestly, that's kind of the average now. But back then, you know, I was wanting to make a little bit more. Um, and the second issue is when you pick up a load on Monday, uh, you were stuck on it till you know, Wednesday or Thursday if it's only a 500-mile load. So, I mean, at 500 miles, I can have that delivered the same day, possibly even the next day. Um, there was just too much time on the loads, which in turn, you know, was less miles. And when you're when you're hustling for miles, it's completely different than it is hustling for money doing uh, freight like I am now. Um, I mean, the miles you just you're. That's why Swift really worked well for me because it was all pretty much drop and hook. Pick up a load, uh, drop it. Pick up an empty trailer, go to the next one, and it's just rinse cycle repeat and it's pretty easy to get you know at the time it was pretty easy to get 27 to 3,000 miles a week doing that and you know that'd give you you know 2,000 2,500 paycheck each week pretty religiously um and when I went to training and went to the target account you know same thing I, I've actually made more money at the target account I mean I could almost double that um when I had a student on the truck that was good uh, the only downfall to that is if you didn't have a, tr a student on the truck that was good, well, you weren't making a whole lot of money. You were making probably what a solo driver made. Um, and just the way the loads were, were set up, that's, you know, there really wasn't much more miles that you can drive more than, you know, 2,500 in a week. And that's, you know, when you got a student on the truck, that's kind of bad. But when you have a student, you know, you can 44,000, 4,500 miles pretty regularly. And guess what? You're getting paid his miles too. So that that was really nice um and you didn't have to pay the student um anyway there's pluses and advantages to every company you just got to figure out what's right for you uh i'm not doing any recruiting right now with uh schneider but i will honestly if you want to come here and you you want some answers or questions like i tell everybody all the time just email me i'll be more than happy to call you back um other than that guys i don't really have much more to say um I'll try to keep doing videos from here and there. If there's, you know, something you guys want to see or something you want to talk about, um, you know, give me a comment. Comment, like, subscribe button. I should say it every video, but I don't. I'm more of the lazy guy. I'm just here to, to kind of put stuff out there for other guys to hopefully learn from. Um, just hang in there, guys. I think it's going to get better. Um, 
I can't say that it's going to get worse because it probably will, but it's going to get better. It's just going to take a little bit of time. But once again, just hang in there. Um, it will turn around, and we're all going to be in a good spot when it does. I promise you. And again, you guys have a good evening, uh, and I'll talk to you all next time.